In organized crime, few names elicit as much fear and fascination as Daniel Kinahan. The son of a notorious Irish gangster, Kinahan rose to power in the global drug trade, earning a reputation as a ruthless and cunning leader. But his greatest infamy came with his alleged involvement in the assassination plot of a rival gang leader, which revealed the brutal and calculated nature of Kinahan's criminal empire. So let's find out the entire story. Ruckus was known for his notoriety, but believed he could enter Ireland without drawing attention. The reward for the job was too great to ignore, a 100,000 euros bounty, potentially double that if he also eliminated Patsy, a Hutch faction leader. His success as a hitman made him a popular choice for the cannon kingpin, and his careful reconnaissance of targets increased the likelihood of a successful hit. The Metropolitan Police suspected Ruckus as the hitman responsible for killing Robert John Goldfinger Palmer, a former Brinks executive found dead in his Essex home garden with six gunshot wounds to the chest. At first, it was believed Palmer died of a heart attack due to the minimal visible injuries, but detectives theorized that a contract killer followed Palmer for several days and threw a spire over the fence to ultimately kill him in the only part of the garden without CCTV coverage. Ruckus arrived in Dublin and spent two hours scouting Palmer's frequented locations, buying a wig at a gift shop. Finally, at 8.30 p.m., a white van with Blake's Town tires picked him up outside Barry's Hotel on Great Denmark Street. However, Ruckus was unaware that he was being monitored by the Irish Garda when he left Dublin Airport. This was due to a tip-off from Eastern European police who joined an Operation Grey Eye Treaty in September 2016, which included Estonian, Lithuanian, and Polish state prosecutors. The icebreaker operation, the largest of its kind in Europe against gangs involved in drug smuggling and assassinations, targeted a dangerous international criminal group of which an Iraqi was a member. UK and Spanish police also participated in the operation. Two years prior, in November 2015, the alleged leader of the Conus Lithuania organized crime group, Dementors Boogie Vicious, was ambushed and killed. He had been under surveillance for months, and a skilled hit team from neighboring Estonia planned the best place to shoot him. The murder investigation was initially handled by Lithuanian police, but after six months, they sought assistance from Estonia's Central Criminal Police Organized Crime Bureau. Argo Lace, the head of CCP, later stated in an interview that Estonians have worldwide connections and criminal agreements and decisions made abroad affect them. For instance, drug crimes like buying and selling cocaine or cannabis occur in Spain's sunny coast or Amsterdam side streets, with Estonia serving as a transit country. Unfortunately, Estonians have also exported their expertise in contract killing to combat international organized crime. Therefore, cooperation with police from other countries is necessary and trust and prompt information exchange are crucial in apprehending criminals who operate outside their home countries. A year after the murder of Dementor's Boogie Vicious, the CCP leveraged favors from underworld contacts to identify the killer. Three names were consistently mentioned as responsible, Arya Grabe, Hans Eric Evert, and Amiri Arakas. Detectives pieced together their movements using phone data and CCTV footage from the night of the murder. While Everett and Grabby were known by the police, they were not considered high-level criminals. Working with Lithuanian authorities, detectives determined that Grabby and Everett had frequently visited Lithuania before the murder. The investigation shifted focus to the third suspect, Amiri Arakas, who was well known to the police and had a reputation as a notorious celebrity gangster after serving time in Russian and Estonian jails. Arakas had relocated to the Costa del Sol in Spain and became a prominent member of a network of Eastern European criminals who carried out hits for drug gangs. As detectives tracked Arrakis' movements over the years, they observed unusual trips to Ireland. The place's attention was caught because Ireland was experiencing a violent gang conflict, and they believed a contract killer may have been involved. Upon his return to Dublin, Arrakis was seen with Stephen Fowler driving a white van carrying a backpack. Again, detectives linked the cartel to the crime. Stephen Fowler, age 60, was a familiar face to the Irish Garda. His son Eric was killed a year after the failed Gatley plot and was associated with the Cannon organization. When officers closed in on his Blackstone Cottages home during the ruckus, Fowler was caught off guard. At 11.25 p.m., Garda entered the property and discovered an individual, Raka, standing near a bed with an encrypted BlackBerry phone on the couch. 
to preserve the messages on the device, an astute officer quickly took photos of the open messages before they could be deleted. Additionally, officers found a scrap of paper with Estonian writing and the names James Gatley and Nuri written in English. The translated text read, Eighth row second pick available Amir purchased the day before. A wig and a stack of euro and sterling notes were also discovered in a bag alongside Rakaz's encrypted BlackBerry phone, which officers knew would be wiped clean as soon as word spread that the hit on Gatley had been carried out. One officer quickly captured photos of the open messages between Our New Knife Bond 4 and Bond New during the trial. Detective Gallagher presented coded messages demonstrating the malicious planning beyond the attempt on Gatley's life. The first message from Knife to Bond, new on April 4th at 1.12 p.m. read, The car exits the rear of this building from a shutter, which opens up and down from a buzzer. There's a ball camera above the entrance. Champagne-colored Toyota advances its parking spaces. Upon opening the shutter, there's a gym directly in front of you. James Gatley drives to Nuri most days and returns. In the second message from Bond, new to Knife, at 10.17 a.m. he asks, Okay, and where can we see photos of him? The third message from Knife to Banu at 1.12 p.m. instructs, For the picture, go to Google. Write James Gatley Dublin. Go to Images, the eighth line of pictures, it's the second picture. It has a black suit on, and when you click on the picture, it has James Gatley written under it. It's a clear picture of him. Arrakis found himself in a difficult position with the Irish police after being caught in a residence owned by a notorious murderer with evidence linking him to the crime. However, the following series of messages sealed his fate and established his motives. So far, in case I'm totally alone, it seems it's possible to take him down when he comes out of the car. It's based on Google Maps pictures. Then there was an open car behind the house, but if they closed it, the situation is different. If he's not out of the car, he's going to the front door. There were huge advertisements on the way, and it looked like it was possible to hide behind. The whole problem is that there's nowhere to hide, especially if you wait until he comes out of the door. Also, a silencer would be good, but especially if the dog is accurate, because if the picture in Google is the same in real life, it could just be one shot to the head and the distance, and that's it. Additionally, a technique can prevent Gatley from closing the front door behind him, allowing for surveillance in the corridor. However, this method only works if the doorframe is metallic, which is not the case based on the available picture. In court, it was revealed that the handwritten note on the property was linked to the phone evidence by matching code numbers and usernames on the back of the page. A distinctive fingerprint was discovered on the note, which matched the fingerprint found on the encrypted BlackBerry phone belonging to Arrakis. The police determined that Gatley was residing at the address mentioned in the messages. A tracking device was discovered under his car, which was placed there by members of the Kitten organization on March 30, 2017. CCTV footage showed that the suspects arrived in Ireland on a ferry from Birmingham on March 28, 2017. While awaiting trial in Ireland, Arrakis was informed that Lithuania also sought him for murder. At the time of his arrest, a high-ranking official reported that Arrakis had killed numerous individuals. A year after being taken into custody, the High Court approved a European arrest warrant. Arrakis would be sent to the Baltic states after serving his time in a secure facility at Port Leash Prison. Despite initially denying involvement in the murder plot and claiming ignorance of Gatley in an interview conducted through letters from jail, Arrakis later pleaded guilty in court. They were sentenced to six years for his role in the attempted hit. He described the prison conditions in Dublin as surprisingly good and shared how he passed the time by fixing televisions and computers. So what do you think of this assassination? Comment below and subscribe for more.